video I'm going to share with you one where is Africa going in terms of its future and what sort of initiatives and platforms you can connect to to be a part of it first what will future Africa look like recently speaking one of the biggest things that was in the news was Akon City Akon City is going to be a futuristic type Wakanda inspired city located in Senegal and yes, Akon himself is the one behind it. He recently secured a $6 billion contract. He's given that contract to a US engineering firm to build it. And phase one is supposed to be starting this year and it's gonna take some years to complete. I think the whole thing's supposed to be completed within 10 years, something like that. Real estate is a huge development and investment opportunity topic that is very popular across the continent. And I feel like there's two branches to that. There's one of like full on cities, like completely developing new cities or redeveloping cities that are already there is a big thing because the development that's happening, a lot is becoming urban, but not a lot of it is, is balancing the industrial or infrastructure side that is needed to maintain this urbanization of Africa. Then there is residential and investment side. The types of, in Accra alone, I recall how many cranes were in the sky. Like you look up and anywhere you look up, there is almost three or four cranes up in the air building something. And majority of that is residential in terms of apartments and apartment complexes, as well as office buildings. Now the majority of those, yes, there's a spectrum in terms of price range, but a lot of them are pushing this, this sales point of is investment. As in, we're not expecting you to live there, we're expecting you to purchase it and then rent it out, sort of thing. Which on the one hand, yeah, sure, that's cool. I feel like your, your sales point is gonna have to shift a little bit depending on your audience. For Ghanaians and other Africans who are doing investments like that, like what we've seen in Ghana, or at least what we've seen in Accra, where it is Ghanaians that purchase these, but they rent them out to the companies and other people who can afford the monthly rent that they are asking for. Well, when you're looking at the diaspora who wants to come, they're not looking to just purchase and give it to someone else. They want to live there. They also want a neighborhood of like-minded people living where they are living. So for those who are in the whole real estate residential side, I would say branch out, not completely ignore the investment side of your sales point, but also take note of like people actually want a real residential feel where the apartment complex also has a grocery market, a place for the kids, a close place for school, and a whole lot of, of space for communal uh, community, right? Where people can hang out together, get to know each other and things like that. That is because that's what they are used to or what they are coming from. I'm not sure, I know for America, a lot of the apartment complexes, there is a whole lot of, there's a game room, there's a TV room, there's a conference room, there's a pool area. There's, there's a lot of place, spaces where you don't have to be in each other's apartments to hang out. Granted, not sure how that translates with at the after effects of uh, the virus, but I do think that will definitely allow you to compete compared to other places that are being built solely for the purpose of we just rent out to people who are not going to who are going to be here temporarily next big thing agriculture the uh oh and shameless plug i actually wrote about akon city for africans on china so you should totally check that out because i went digging in terms of like what's actually going on and who's backing it and things like that food is a big commodity we have a whole lot of farmers throughout Africa and they are not getting the type of cuts and support and infrastructure like farmers in the West. And the fact that you have an even bigger demand on food due to populations are constantly are continuing to increase and grow throughout Africa. And the deal of importing everything is obviously not cost beneficial in any shape or form. Being able to switch up agriculture in Africa to not only really feed its own people, but also be able to export its content 
in a way that actually is financially beneficial to Africa as opposed to everyone else is a real is is something that I feel Africa will be moving more and more towards. The whole e-learning concept is also a pillar to look into is also like a a branch within the whole tech app pillar. Africans really pride themselves on education like across the continent. Everyone loves their certificate and being able to bring that to the person's home or to their phone or in some shape or form in that way that's convenient for them but also truly accessible. It will be a game changer to the consumer but also a serious game changer to anybody or the variety of people who uh, tap into that and create that ecosystem in itself. Another branch in the whole tech aspect is e-commerce. I recently tweeted about this. I'm going to share it with you guys in this video as well. Uh, e I feel like e-commerce is going to be scaling up across Africa, right? In, in everything from fashion to, to skincare to, yo, know, even food, like, like everything. Now, all of us have an idea for a product, which is awesome, including myself, which I'm working on. If you also want to tap into that beyond a product, think of everything that keeps that ecosystem going, right? Infrastructure, manufacturing, inventory storage, shipping, delivery, customs, websites. Again, the financial aspect of how easy and secure is it to make transactions to purchase these things online. All of those aspects of e-commerce in Africa has voids that need to be filled. How and where can you connect to this new Africa Renaissance? If you like me, when I was preparing to go and move to Ghana and my first few months in Ghana, you might be feeling a little overwhelmed. There's so much resources in terms of, oh, I, I'm watching this person's story of what they did. I'm reading up the news about this. I'm listening to people on the ground saying this and that. Okay, great, but I really don't really know like what is actually available? Like what are my options and how do I even find them? And it kind of turns into a bit of a scavenger hunt. I feel like eventually as this, as this growth and innovation continues, there, there will be a time where we do have like, it'd be great to have like this one-stop shop kind of directory slash connective platform where you can filter through any niche you're interested in, industry you're interested in, skill set, lifestyle, country, city, language, everything. And then you got a list where you can just plug and play. And you're good to go and then boom, this is where I'm investing, boom, this is where I'm connecting to, and boom, that's where my house is gonna be. Let's go, right? I feel we'll get there. We will totally get there. We're not there yet. So instead, the scavenger hunt continues, and then there's some of us who try to, you know, distill down that information. These are not in any particular order, all right, but these are things that I've checked out and I think are awesome. First, there is a ebook that I highly recommend you go and download. It is called How to Move to Africa. In particular, it's focusing on Ghana. It's by two amazing ladies, Bridget and Nana. This ebook is free. And I love the way it breaks down resources and tips on one, all the types of preparing that you need to do before before you even purchase your plane ticket, as well as what to expect when you're on the ground and how to maneuver your new life while you're on the ground. Next, there will soon be an online platform to filter through and connect with the right people. Odana Connect is going to be that platform. Now this platform is supposed to help you connect and collaborate with hard to find Africans, either for investments, job opportunities, business opportunities, as well as experts in the field. It is also by Odana Network, which I am sure you, if you are interested in Africa and the new Africa Renaissance, I'm sure you have seen one or multiple of her amazing videos. If you're not already subscribed to her channel, you slack in and you need to. So they are the ones behind Odana Connect and I'm super excited. I've already signed up for the wait list, especially during this time. The amount of connections, the amount of meaningful connections that are happening now online, a lot more intentional, I think, with our time online and really needing to fulfill this need of connecting. 
I think this is, this is the perfect time to have this and I'm so excited to see where it goes. Next, I'm not the only person who calls this the new Africa Renaissance, right? There is actually an officially a new African Renaissance. Now, this too also just popped up over the summer People were talking on Twitter and decided, you know what? Let's do our virtual conference and let's get this popping. And they had their virtual conference and now actually have a website posted up for those of you who are interested. If, now this is if you are interested in investing in the industrialization, urbanization, infrastructure, and that sort of thing. They have three tiers in terms of what you invest in, whether it be to invest in building a city, investing in the people who are building the city, investing in the skills, on the ground as well. And they do have it listed of like what monetary budget you have and things like that. We've spoken about where I feel the types of bigger industries Africa is moving towards in terms of the future. We've spoken on what types of initiatives and platforms you can look into. Now, finally, where do you fit? As you may know, I'm all about mindset. I feel that that is so important, regardless of strategy and community and money and luck or anything, your mindset, I feel, is what dictates how successful any of that ends up being for you. So I want to share with you some questions for you to reflect for yourself on how to figure out where you can fit. Because the thing about the new Africa Renaissance is that it's huge. The continent itself is huge. So everything that's happening in it is huge. And it can be overwhelming. So first you gotta ask yourself, why Africa? I know, it's a very simple question. Your answer may be like, um, duh, because it's Africa. Like, I understand. But really, for you yourself, why Africa? When do you want to visit or move to Africa? As you know, regardless of technology, you being on the ground is what will determine your success in whatever you do in Africa. And to be honest, I'm not claiming that everybody should move to Africa, I'm not claiming no one should move to Africa. I feel as you reflect for yourself of what this means for you, I think you will figure out what actually is aligned with what you need to do. For some, they do need to move. For others, they need to balance two worlds. While others, they need to do it from a distance where they remain outside, but they maintain some connection on the ground. What does that look like for you? To answer that, also ask yourself, what do you want to impact? How do you want to make money? Certain lifestyles cost less or more throughout Africa. The money part, I think part of it also is the, where are you in your life's journey, right? You have some, like let's take, you know, diasporans who are coming to Ghana. You have one part who they are looking to, okay, purchase land and sit down and stuff because they're living off of their pension. They're living off of retirement their priorities of how they're connecting in Ghana and what they're doing are very different from the other group who saved up maybe, or just packed up and left and now need to create streams of income. What season are you in when it comes to money? And how are you going to maneuver that with your connection to Africa, tapping into Africa, moving to Africa, investing in Africa, whichever aspect you're trying to do? It's not gonna work if there's tension between that. I feel like regardless of which season, every season has a place in Africa. I really, I really believe that. It depends on how you work it though. That is not an exhaustive list of questions, but I feel like that's a good start to one, avoid getting overwhelmed. It makes it easier, one, for you to find what you're looking for, but two, to have others help you find what you are looking for. I hope you found these tips and resources helpful. Make sure, go to my website, dagnizenovia.com. I will list all the resources and platforms that I listed, as well as give you some more insight to how you can find, as well as be a part of the new Africa Renaissance. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you in advance if you have already. Finally, I want to hear from you. Comment below and share with me, what do you want the new Africa Renaissance to look like for you? Now this does not only have to be based off of what you want your you see what you want to see government do or what you want to see big corporations do. I also want to hear about you as an individual. Share with me below and let's continue the conversation. Thank you so much for watching. 
Be safe. I'll see you next time.